We're such a lovely people. I always enjoy coming back and seeing God move. The presence of God is precious, amen? Bless you, Lord. If you have your Bible, will you turn me please to the Gospel of John, the seventh chapter, verses 40 to 52. For the past few weeks, and even days as well, just one verse came out into my head. No man speaks like this man. I remember hearing an audio clip of the founder of Elam, George Jeffries, preach upon that message. But to this day, to my knowledge, and I jerk sermon journal, I try to keep up with preachers and teaching series, I still yet to hear a sermon about no man speaks like this man. For in it, there is life-giving, life-receiving, liberty-shaking from sin and shame. Mm -hmm. So if you have your Bible, will you turn me please to John 7, verses 40 to 52, as a well, basis for this morning's message. Therefore many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, truly, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that Christ from the seed of David, from the town of Bethlehem where David was, so there was division among the people because of him. Now some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them, Why have you not brought him in? The officers answered and said, No man ever spoke like this man, or in the old King James, no man speaketh like this man. Then the rulers or the Pharisees answered, Are you, you also a deceived? Have have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd that does not know the law is a curse. Nicodemus, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does not does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? They answered and said to him, Are you also from Galilee? <coughs> Search and look, for no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. And God always blesses the reading of this beautiful sure. and inspiring <clears throat> word. Mm. Let's pray together, shall we? I don't know about you, but that was a precious time. Thank you, Brother David, for that meditation and that prayer time. Let's just continue in that prayer time for just one second or two. Let's just pray. Father, thank you you are here. Your presence has been made manifested. I thank you for every person, for the oldest to the youngest. I thank you out of the mouth of babes shall be ordained praise. Lord, I thank you that your presence is here. I thank you that you're moving in our midst. Mm -hmm. I thank you for those who are joining online, live, or watching it later. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would just close us in with yourself, that yes, you would Lord. speak to our hearts, that you would encourage us, that you would move us. I pray, Lord, mm -hmm. that there's someone here under conviction who does not know you, or perhaps gone cold in heart, that they would be changed. Yes. Lord, I pray, Lord, for the Thrive Youth Ministry, I thank you for the team. I thank you for every ministry under Valley yes, Cell in the Elam, under the leadership of Pastor Tom. Lord, bless him and the team and the elders of this church. Lord, I pray, Lord, as this church is placed here, it'll be a light on a hill proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Now, Lord, just would you anoint me afresh by the power of your Holy Spirit, and may your name be high and lifted up. Praise you, you be seen and you be heard. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sure. No man speaks like this man. Praise God. Have you ever heard any person on this earth in your lifetime speak like Jesus Christ? I guarantee you haven't. Because his words are life-giving, chain-breaking, soul-delivering, life-eternal words that have changed the hearts of many and 2,000 years later are still changing lives right. to this day. What a mighty God we serve. That's right. But why do we act so powerless? Because there's power in the word. Isn't it not said that the power of life is in the tongue? That's right. May we speak like Christ. May we be salt and light to our families and to our workplaces and to the place that God has called us to be. Because when the people heard him, no one spoke like him. But when the disciples preached the good news, they took a note that these men and these women have been with Jesus. Mm. Can it be said of you this morning and I this morning that I have been with Jesus? Because that's all I want to be like. 
I want to be more of him. Because I know Michael Cross and I don't like him very much. Because I've seen the worst of him. But I want to be more like Jesus Christ because he is altogether lovely. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. That's true. And there's so many in this world, many voices blasting across the airwaves and on social media saying this, have this and you'll be happy. Be this way and you'll be happy. And yet why are we so miserable? Why are there so many problems? Why are there so many leaders among the nations and yet they're still turmoil, distress, and upset. Why? Because we have not turned to this man whose lives, got, whose lives have been changed by his word, whose nations and communities have been changed. When revivals came high, by listening to his word, by believing on his word, and by following in his word. You see, Christ is the way the truth and the life. What life are you living? There is more to life than Instagram lights getting wasted under neon lights. Can't you not see? But there is more. There is more to this life. And it's found in Christ. Chapter 7 is an interesting chapter because it seems like everybody's against Christ. The opening chapter, and I pray you turn to it. In the opening of verses, verses 1 to 9, his brothers look for him, and they don't believe in him. They think he's nuts. And that encourages me, because, let's be honest, don't some of our families think we're strange or not because we follow this book? That a man born of a virgin, lived 2,000 years ago, had a very short ministry of three years, was crucified, died, and rose again. But yet our lives are changed. Amen. Yes. Praise but take courage in this. Go well, on the brothers of Christ James. He did not believe. Would later believe. And become a head pastor in the church of Jerusalem. And suffered a martyr's death. You see. They take note of us. I always have been encouraged. Because it's been nearly 13 years. Since my grandma Billy got saved. And my grandmother for 31 years. Prayed for him. Every day, saw nothing. But when she was dying, he started to take note. Because but he was turning seven and he was stinking and he was stinking. See, this man, he enjoyed a drink or two in the workman's club. Could drink some men under the table and then some. He was a hard man. Kicked out of BBs for fighting. Got suspended from the shipyard. Was arrested for fighting, but it was self-defense later on. But he was a rough man. He was a working class man. Then God saved them on Christmas Day nearly 13 years ago. You see, don't be discouraged when you're praying for that grandson of yours or that child of yours that breaks your heart. And please do talk to your pastor, talk to the team, and pray together for that person because there's nothing too hard for thee. Perhaps there's someone here and you're resting under conviction because your grandmother or a family friend have been praying for you and praying for you. Do you think you're here this morning by accident? You're not. You're here for a purpose. <clears throat> you see in verses 40, some say this is a prophet. Some say this is the Christ. There is division between the people. Oh, this man's a prophet of God. No, this man's the Messiah. But yet, they could not be confronted with Jesus and remain truly neutral. What do you think of him? I don't care how old you are or how young you are. Because... When you give your life to Christ, no matter what age, when he saves, he keeps. That's right. You see, this event happened on the day of the last day of the last great feast, which was the Feast of Tabernacles. And Jesus stood out in the in 30, verses 37, and he cried out. When Jesus cried out, I pray you listen. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. You see, the Feast of Tabernacles, which was celebrated in September, October, when families camped out in the desert in temporary dwellings on their way to Canaan out of Egypt, under the leadership of Moses, they remembered God's faithfulness. 
Do you remember or do you see God's faithfulness in your life? I've come. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and what? And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> COVID is not the life of me, I'm not going to lie. But I can count my, I can count and count that God has been faithful to me. Mm. He is altogether faithful. Praise your Lord. If you put your trust in Jesus Christ this morning, he will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter what happens in your life. Right. Christ will sustain you. Christ will guide you. And he will see you through. Glory be to his name. Praise yeah. your Lord. You see, the water, Jesus offered a perpetual river of living water out of the most innermost being, or out of his belly, as it means, shall flow liver, rivers of living water. Joy to be in the slack so I can get tongue tied easily. I have your belly now. I know I've got pretty big stuff thanks to lockdown. But out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. What flows out of your belly? What flows out of it? See, the Jerusalem Talmud talks about, connects the ceremonies in the scripture with the Holy Spirit. Why is the name of it called the drawing out of the water? Because the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, according to what is said, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. Have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Mm. Have you experienced his power? I pray you do. Because when you seek him with all your heart, it is incredible to see God move. I have prayed for babies that medically, it's a miracle how they got into this earth. But I know who was behind the miracle. And his name is Jesus. I have held them in my arms. One of them turned to glory be to God who was told no. The mother was advised eight times to terminate her pregnancy and she refused according to her faith. And she brings joy. Blessed be her. Our God is a miracle working God. Hallelujah. So let us not act powerless. Let us walk in the resurrected power. Not with cocky, cocky arrogance. But with humble hearts. Knowing that nothing can stand against our God. And they start to ask. Will the Christ come out of Galilee? Some rejected Jesus because they were ignorant. Not knowing the truth about him. Is there someone here and you're arrogant of the truth about him? Perhaps you're taking the church to every meeting under the sun. Perhaps you felt like it was your new house, changing their dress card, Bally Cell Neelan. Because that's how I felt growing up. I was a church kid. And I want to tell you some church kids are the worst. We know better, but we wait till the last possible second to, to do the right thing, don't we? It's true. But we, but we heard the truth. Have you heard the truth? Has the truth set you free this morning? Are you walking in the truth? Because they thought, well, hang on. The Messiah is meant to come from the seed of David, which is true, because Jesus did come from the seed of David, from Bethlehem. We all know the Tedley. Baby born in Bethlehem in the manger. But hang on, he comes from Galilee. People forget the town of Galilee, the residents came from where? Bethlehem. Why did Joseph come back to Bethlehem on the census? Because that's where his family was from. But they didn't search for truth. As our brother prayed, we know that we serve a living God. Because all major founders of different religions, we can point to their graves. And they're there. But if we go to the tomb of Jesus Christ, he's not there. Why? Because he is risen and seated at the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession, praying for you. He says to Elaine, I'm praying for you. He says to Pastor Tom, I'm praying for you. David, I'm praying for you. Billy at the back, I'm praying for you. Lynn, I'm praying for you. And we don't have to work for this because he has done the work on the cross. And by faith that we receive this, can we have access to it? Oh, sorry. I'm, 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 oh, that was by way of introduction. I better hurry on. Chuck Colson of the Watergate scandal. And that's where we get every other gate scandal, including the famous Bake Off bin gate scandal. My wife has got me watching Bake Off. I must admit, I love it. I don't know what it is. It's the pressure of it. It's great. But Chuck Swindle, or not Chuck Swindle, Chuck Colson, that's a different Chuck. 
Chubb Colson from the, from the Watergate scandal of the 1970s. Some of you might be alive to remember it. Was some of the most powerful men in the world when Richard Nixon was being a bad boy. That's an understatement. Try to get away what he did. But, tw- but some of the most powerful men in the world couldn't keep alive for two weeks. And the disciples believed, proclaimed it, suffered terrible deaths. They said, you're telling me they would die for a lie? That's impossible. And he got right with God and he started the present fellowship based on the truth that Jesus Christ was risen. Because he read the words of Jesus mm-hmm. and to him, no man ever spoke like this man. Right. These officers that were sent by the Pharisees to arrest him, but then get him because it wasn't time. These officers have heard many rabbis, many teachers, and perhaps you've heard many teachers in your life. Perhaps you've been to Sunday school, boys brigade, girls brigade, and you've heard many teachers, but they never heard someone spoke like Jesus. They were so touched, so impressed by the message of Jesus Christ, they found it impossible to do the task they were assigned to, arresting him and silencing him. Never a man, neither did any man talk in this fashion, as one translation puts it. Now the Greek word man, anthropos, occurs in the emphatic position at the end of the sentence and applies the contrast that he must be more than an ordinary human being. These officers realize this is no man of this earth, for he is the Son of God. Do you remember the disciples? When, when Peter was walking on the waves and the waves were boisterous and they're walking back to the boat and they said, truly this man is the Son of God. Mm-hmm. Was there another person who said that? The centurion? He says, surely this was a righteous man. Truly, this was the Son of God. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for your sins, who took your sin and shame, and only by his name are you forgiven? Only by his work will you be received into the kingdom of God? The gospel is so simple. Repent and believe. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, or what background you're from. If you turn to Jesus Christ, he can set you free from sin and oh, shame right, and all the bondage. I've seen drug addicts yes, being set free. I've seen alcoholics being set free. I've seen people who've been addicted to online pornography and so on. You see, he can clear your browsing history, but he can't clear your conscience. Mm. I went there because it's a secret silent sin. If I spoke with men and women, I've seen it, them being free. I've seen... It's incredible to see how the gospel works. You see, the gospel moves. It changes lives. Dion Moody says this, When a man is filled with the word of God, you cannot keep him still. If a man has got the word, he must speak or die. And that's how I feel as an itinerant preacher. That's how I feel in my workplace when I get the opportunity to share my faith. Word's gone around the COVID test center that Michael's trained to be a pastor. One guy said to me, are you the one who's trained to be a pastor? I went, yes. And he goes, no way, the non-Christian version of it. You couldn't believe it. Why would you? Why do you believe this? I get a chance to share my faith. I shared my faith with a backslider who, seeing the, the troubles, and I says, well, today is the day of salvation. I'm praying for that man. Maybe he's listening, I don't know. God has placed you in your workplace. God has placed you in the office, in the factory, wherever. And I know there are some unsaved characters and boy, will they take the mick out of you. But there's a joy. There's a satisfaction. And when you keep praying for them, when you keep being faithful to the work you've called it, and not doing it for your boss, but doing it unto the Lord, God rewards faithfulness. But my encouragement to you is, No man has ever spoke like this man. And no one has. And I love the sound of children in the church because didn't Jesus take children and bless them? Amen? Amen. Who knows what they're hearing? What seeds will be planted? Keep them going, church. Because Jesus can speak to the lives of little children, to the hardest adults, to the most skeptics. He can make whole. Is there a skeptic amongst us? 
your parents took you to church, your grandparents took you to church and you're a bit skeptical, come to Christ. Come to him. Because the voices of this world say this, follow this, have this and you'll be happy, but you're mis miserable. You don't have it. You don't have what your heart's longing for. Because there's a God-shaped hole in the human race. And the only thing that can satisfy that hole and fill that gap is Jesus Christ. Yes. Do you know him? I encourage you, church, to go in wherever situations you find yourselves in, to go proclaim this truth and be like the disciples of old, saying that they have taken note, that they have been with Jesus. Shall we pray? I pray this word has blessed you. I was talking mainly to believers, but I never ever assume that everyone here is a believer. I never assume every person here knows the Lord. But as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, and I'm praying, I don't, doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, I don't know if I know you personally or whatever. I don't care if you're related to high members of the church, that doesn't bother me. I want to ask you a question while our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Do you know the Lord Jesus? Have you accepted him? Or perhaps you've made mistakes and you've done things you shouldn't have and you want to get right with God. This morning, Jesus' hand, that nail pierced hand, is stretched out to you. And it doesn't matter what you've done. God can forgive you. God can cleanse you. And God can make you new. If there's someone here and you want to get right with God, while our eyes are closed, Nobody's watching. I'm not going to make a spectacle. All I want to do, ask you to do is just raise your hand. I'll just pray for you. That's all I want to do. I just want to pray for you. That's all. While our heads are bowed, would there be one? Will you just raise that hand and I'll see it and pray for you. God bless you, sir. I see your hand. Will you take it down? Praise God. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Will there be another one? While our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. God bless you, sir. I see your hand. Is there another one? Praise God. Church, two, people, two men have raised their hand. Just keep praying, would you, for me, please? These two dear men, thank you for them. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Is there someone here who used to go to church and perhaps you backslide like the prodigal? Let me tell you quickly, very quickly, about this man, the prodigal son. When he went to the far country and he wasted his life in sin and shame, he came back into his senses. And perhaps you've came to your senses this morning here in Valley Salamina. And he wanted to get right with God. And he came right and had this big speech with her. And when he was far, far off, his father saw him and ran to him and loved him and hugged him and embraced him in his mess. You too can be embraced, forgiven. Would there be another one? Would there be someone here who said, I want to get right with Christ? Would there be one? My appeal is only one minute long. I'm keeping an eye on the time. I'm thanking God for two men. Would there be another one? Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. I just want to pray for you. Okay, I'm going to leave that issue with you. For those two men, I want to ask the church, can you help me? I'm going to say a prayer. Can the church repeat this prayer with me? Is that okay, Pastor Tom? Let's pray this prayer. Let's encourage these two men. Let's pray together, gentlemen. Jump, jump Let's pray together, church. Just repeat this prayer after me and meet up with all your heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you. Heavenly Father, I come to you. In the name of your Son. In the name of your Son. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for taking my sin and shame. Thank you for taking my sin and shame. And forgiving me. And forgiving me. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for rising from the dead. And being seated at the right hand of God. And being seated at the right hand of God. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for keeping me. Help me to follow you. Help me to follow you. Help me to love you. Help me to love you. Because you first loved me. Because you first loved me. For I ask this in Jesus' name. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give God the glory to people in this world? Amen. I would encourage you to speak to Pastor Tom, David, William, and, and who's one of the youth leaders in Thrive, or I can't remember the other person's name, who's the other leader in Thrive, John Lanaputin. We have you as well.
or myself and just say, I've prayed that prayer, and they will encourage you, they will build you on. And if there's anyone else looking for prayer, perhaps your sick and body, please speak to us. We'll pray for you. Although we can't lay our hands on you, there's someone who can always touch you who's not limited to social distancing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tom. I'll hand this over to you and let's just worship the King. Praise be your name. Thank you, Michael. Praise you, Lord. Guys, don't forget we're back again at 7 o'clock, so uh, we'll look forward to seeing you then. But bless you all. You guys, have a really good day. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.